I'm Pep Claudet, head coach of Birmingham City Football Club in the Championship in England. And today I'm here to answer questions from the Coach's Voice community to ask the coach. If you want answers for that, the only thing you need to do is watch how Manchester City does it, how Barcelona does it, very similar, and how all those big teams who face this, this situation, a lot of the times in their games, how they do it. But basically, what you want is, uh, if a team puts um, all their players behind the ball, it means that possibly the center of the, the, center of the pitch is going to be more congested. So obviously, you need to to work the game out wide. For this, you can use it if you play on a 4-4-2 or on a 4-3-3 or a 4-2-3-1, you can use it with the wingers wide. Um, and you need to move always the ball to make sure the ball transits and gets to the wide areas and force that team to be able to put the defensive composition of their side on that side and then be able to transit it back to the middle and then go to the other side. So that's very important because when the team is so compacted, you will never find easy gaps in between the lines unless you rely a lot on, on individual ability of the players and you can do it, it's no problem. But then you need to make sure if that's what you're going to do, you need to make sure that you need to remember that the risk that you're taking of losing the ball and being countered is bigger, is higher. So you need to, to take this into account when it comes to defensive transition. So I think it's safer to try to go always wide and, and when they come and close that side, try to manage to get to the other side. It requires a lot of patience. Um, but eventually, it's very difficult to defend that. That I think all the teams who, who are very good defensively, they end up struggling if they need to close one wing and then the other wing and then the other wing and then the other wing. So four movements like that are very difficult defensively. Uh, you end up always a little bit unadjusted and, and then opportunities can come for the opposition. So that's very important. So go out wide. Second, the shots, instead of trying to, to reach the final position, the shots in the box, you can use as well shots from outside the box, especially if that team is very low as well. If it's very low, then you need to shoot from outside to try to drag them out, out of, the, of the box. And when it comes to, to final attacks on it, um, if you try to impose yourself and play through through wide areas, then you, you need to do overlaps and end up in crossing situations or in, <clears throat> in in cutbacks situations. And basically that's the general the general ideas that any team who faces this, this situation applies. It's very similar as when you play against a team that is that has for whatever reason one player less because of a of a a red card or something, have a one player less, they normally put all the bodies, uh, all the players behind the ball and then you, you need to work your way around them. So it's very similar. So actually, that's the kind of training that we all should do. And the team should know exactly what to do in those situations. Normally, the, that player is training with you, with a group, and then you see how he develops and, and how he participate if he's trying if he's trying to do everything easy or simple or if he's trying to express himself when he gets to the point that he's trying to express himself it means that he has football already and he's adapted he's, he's comfortable with the, with the teammates with the professionals around them and then that's a that's a good point the next step is to make sure that mentally he is resilient enough to understand that um, that he needs to manage the highs and the lows of the professional game because if he goes out there and, and he doesn't make it, he's going to take pressure out of it. And if he goes out there and he makes it and, and he doesn't manage that high, then as soon as he doesn't make it, it will take a lot of pressure with him. So you need to, to, to work on those, on those details. So that's why when I say one a season, uh, it's, it's something that is achievable and it can grant a good success as well financially for the, for the team. And we avoid... Uh, putting the boys too early to too much stressful situations. Um, with us, we developed Jude here, but we're working with, with many others like Odin, Giraldo, Monse, who are very close to us as well. Uh, 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 Jack as well is very close to us. 
uh, and they're all regularly training, training with us. But it's important to make sure that we as a head coach or as a manager, we remember that it's, a, it's, it's going to be our fault if the player doesn't make it. So we need to make sure that when we play a player, uh, we play it for, it, for him to, to be able to make it, you know, not to fail. I think it's important if you want to be a coach. Of course, it's very important to have a, a, a good a good library. Like I have a, a good library that I used all over the years. I used to read everything that was possible, but I, I used to go and watch anything that was possible, and 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 speak to any coach that was possible, and play any game that I could play as well as possible. So everything because you end up loving the game. But I have a few. I I can show you because I have them with me always. You know, so. A few of them, a few of them only. Um, that one, so I'm Spanish, but that one is a fantastic football book. Possibly it's more about how the study of the competition and the psychology of the competition, but it, it touches everything. I, it was a, a former professor of mine, and and it was a fan, that's a fantastic football book. Hombres para el fútbol. The Santiago Coca. Right, one. Fantastic. Uh, one of my assistants in Malaga and a very good friend of mine wrote the book and I thought, wow, wow, very good. How to link um, the offensive side of the game with methodology and with the right um, methodology and the right uh, physical fundamentals as well and collectively, you know, to develop a collective idea. So I thought, oh, that's fantastic. You know? And that's a, that's a book. That's a DVD, it comes from the book, but that's a good. The book is called Tareas para la Mejora de los Movimientos Ofensivos en Javier Bernal. This should be in English, I know, but very good. And when I came to England, I bought, I checked, I checked how many in English, you know, do we have, and, and I, I scroll, I scroll through through many, and and I had many, and and I keep two two of them with me. But here I only have one. Um, this one, it has something special because I know it's been written in a way. It's about it's about Marcelo Bielsa. It's called Revolución, but the philosophy of football in shadows of Marcelo Bielsa. This is a good book. This is a good book because. Possibly most of the things it's been it's been collected by sources or or online resources or 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 by just analyzing it or watching train, trainings of, of Marcelo. But actually, that because I know well how he works and how he thinks and and actually it's a good collection of of his ideas, especially very applied to 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 training and to and to to the game. Very good, uh, very good application, and a lot of examples of trainings that most of them I would say that yeah, yeah, it it, it kind of fits right. And one example, this I take it with me every way is, that I mentioned before. It's not about football, but it's it's worth it. It's about basketball really, but that's a Phil Jackson book called Sacred Hoops, and that's a that book made a before and after in my mentality as a as a coach. That's it. But not only reading, important to watch the game, analyze it, and, and trial and error in the training pitch. You know, you, we have to do that, that process as well. Yeah. To see the full Q&A and for more exclusive content from top-level professional and academy coaches, subscribe to the Coaches Voice Academy at academy.coachesvoice.com.